everybody and welcome back. Uh, we're just done with the uh, tanking again. Uh, so, just getting a load on. This will be fourth load today. Uh, so, put you over that. So, we've got the 390T over there on the fully stirring. Stirring away. Tank is just filling up nicely, it's just a bottom of the tube there. Uh, so the slurry pit, as you can see, is quite full again. So we emptied that. So we emptied the slurry goo three weeks ago, I think. Uh, I did put a video up when we did empty it, but uh, only three weeks it's filled up again. Uh, but one of the things we had, we had a lot of crust and hard sort of slurry that had gone hard. Basically, if you don't know, you put slurry in the slurry lagoon and it separates. So when you store them up, the muck separates generally. The extent of how it separates depends on what you feed the cows on, really. But what goes in the slurry lagoon is all the muck out the cube sheds off the yard, the feed area, all the muck off the collecting yard and out the parlour and then all the dirty water from washing out the parlour and all any rainwater that falls on the yard all has to go in the slurry we do. Then we put the tractor on the slurry stirrer, it whisks it all up and we're going to spread it and then pump it out and spread it on the field. Uh, but there was basically a lot of hard crust left in that review when we emptied it last time. And what we did was it rained a lot after we last uh, well after we emptied it, so it filled up with a lot of dirty water. And what we did was we put the stretch and stir it, and we managed to stir all that crust up. So now I'm not sure how well you can make it out. But right at the back of the lagoon, it's just a small piece of grass, probably two or three metres wide, and then the length, then the width of the slurry pit across. So, not much really. The tank is nearly full now. So, um, I'm trying to do this one hand. Yeah. I'm just going to switch the slurry sphere off. So I just put the slurry sphere off just while the uh, tank was loading because there were a lot of hard mock. Turn the rims off. PCO off. Ah, so I just draw it forward a bit because the problem we've had before is putting gear as well. Uh, I've gone with a load of slurry before and it's rolled back into the slurry again. And we don't want that. Uh, it's not happened for probably 10 or 12 years, probably. Not the last time it ever happened. Yeah. Take this load of slurry and I'll show you where we're going. Put the hill there. Yeah, so we're going onto some silage ground with this mop. But these fields putting this on are the fields we mow last. So we do all the down silage, but we'll mow fields in a certain order, if that makes sense. So the fields we mow first will have more fertilizer and I'll guess probably twice during the space of the winter. So they get slurry first and then they get slurry last. Uh, certainly how we do it. I just think two lots of slurry and a bit more fertilizer. 
might as well have to grow more so that you can mow first. Whereas these fields are doing now, we mow them last. If that makes sense, well, we normally mow them last. Uh, and actually, my brother's sheep are on there at the minute as well. Well, they're over there. But there's uh, four fields, and we've done, we've done nearly two of them so far. That 48.
sort of show you the new splash pipe. Now, you know what I mean when I say it's covering the back of the tanker. I mean, these are mud flats, so I'm not bothered if, it, if it's covering that or what. What I do concern me is it's covering that and there are number plate under there and my lines. Same for this side. Now, what I'm trying to look at getting is an extension that can bolt on here and pull this back or go on the other side of the valve and pull it back enough oil pipe to pull it back, pull it back, so the splash plate probably here, say, somewhere around here, instead of there, when I splash back the tank to the back. Just annoying at the minute. I mean, it's all right at the minute, I'm not going up a road, but if I'm going up a road, if I'm going up a road like this, I'll have to keep going up and cleaning my lights. I mean, there's a bit of silage wedged in there. And that's one of the problems when you feed round bales. Round bales get you this slurry. And that's one of the reasons why we're so reliant on a slurry server. But I've not got it running on this load. You can see over here. And I'll just come over here. To the night, I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through, it's true, baby let the light shine through, if you believe it's true, baby won't you let the light shine through, for you.
sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through. It's true, baby, let the light shine through. If you believe it's true, baby, won't you let the light I stand corrected if someone wants to correct me. 
but yeah, I prefer it to splash plate. As soon as it rains, when it's on more splash plate, it's washed it. It's washed out of the soil. Because they say, what they say is. <coughs> What they say is, you're putting slurry on the leaf and it's damaging the leaf. I've got to shut that gate so I've stopped. Uh, back in a minute. Yeah, but what were I saying? Um, personally, well, what they say is, it burns on the leaf and it burns the leaf because if you put it on when it's not going to rain, it's going to burn on the leaf and it does the plant no good and all this. Rammel, but technically, we don't go a very long period without rain in this country. We do in the summer, granted, but if you knew it was going to be a dry spell, you wouldn't go to put slurry on. Well, I wouldn't personally, I'd wait till it was forecasting some rain. Same when you're putting your fertilizer on, you wait till some rain, and then you put your muck and your fertilizer on as it will wash in into the soil which is what you want but if I put rubble on this tanker or a trailing ship I'd instantly need a bigger tractor this tractor won't cope and it uses it'll make me use more diesel I, I don't see the environmental benefits because I'm, I'm tootling along with this and I've done done about 10 loads today I think and tractor has Tractor doesn't even use a quarter of a tank of diesel. Probably use an eighth, to be fair. It's not barely dropped. Draws power tracks, it's not a barely dropped. Shifted over, what, 10 low, that's 22,500 gallons a month. And the other problem with a dribble bar and trailing shoe is your mutton needs to be more liquid. Because the simple reason is it's going through a smaller hole. This is coming going through six inch, and then it's going through a cone that's probably three inch, two or three inch. I'd say it's being forced through that cone. Now the problem we have personally, we we feed all round bell silage, and occasionally that bump of silage that goes into that cone and gets wet. So you have to take your brass plate off and pull it out. Part of the downfalls of a feeding round bale size, but I won't get into that. It only happens occasionally, it's happened once today. But uh, for the dribble wire trailing ship, that would be even worse. I can't see that going even. Well, I know they have a mac macerator, is it a macerator on? They have a mac macerator on, is it called macerator? Or a macerator, which is basically like a big blade that's chopping and the muck goes through and it's being forced through holes. But I think it'd wear that out, surely. If you were putting a lot around bale silage that's in the muck going through it, I think it'd personally wear it out. Sorry, I'm just, I've got to go and milk now. Uh, but as I can tootle along with this keep doing a few load every now and then not after mither of a blocking dribble bar or trailing shoe or whatever you know I only personal experience put on with splash plate but uh, I'm gonna end the video here Hope you enjoy this little video I've done. Um, if you have to, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.